Now, uh, the other question, other common question is, what is forceps delivery and what is vacuum delivery? We've all heard about these different ways in which a delivery can be helped. And um, so, you know, it, it requires a mother to uh, push in the second stage of labor. After the cervix is fully opened, she has to make this pushing effort in order to facilitate the birth of the baby's head. But uh, sometimes because of maternal exhaustion or uh, other reasons, if she's not able to push well, then we have to pull it with instruments. Forceps is a, you know, it's an instrument with two blades, which is applied onto the sides of the baby's head and uh, with pulling efforts, the baby's head is delivered out. A vacuum serves the same purpose, but here we uh, have a vacuum that cups the head of the baby and the same with the same kind of pulling effort, the head of the baby is extracted out. So sometimes we need to cut short the second stage of labor. That is, if the baby is getting distressed out or there are special medical condition, uh, like the mother has some cardiac issues wherein the second stage of labor has to be cut short. So at the end of, uh, you know, 40 completed weeks, which is the entire term, Sometimes if you've not, uh, you know, got your pains, so there is something called induction of labor, uh, which, uh, you know, can be practiced here. So we wait for a few more days, even beyond the 40 weeks completed. Having said that, we, ha we need to monitor you closely. The best pains uh, are your own natural pains, but if for some reason there's some kind of a placental insufficiency wherein the baby is not growing well or because of a prolonged pregnancy and for such reasons we can uh, you know try to bring about these pains and this is called induction of labor so you can do it mechanically by uh, stretching of the cervix or by breaking the bag of waters or by medication which is usually instilled into the vagina or the cervix which comes in forms of some gel or a ribbon. So these are the various ways to uh, start your labor, pa labor pains. Now, who are the people, you know, who can deliver normally? This is a major, major question and a major perplexing thing. Now, you know, if you are having a low risk pregnancy, that means you are uh, in the in the right age, you're not too old or too young, or uh, the pregnancy throughout in, in the entire nine months has been smooth for you. There are no major complications. There are no medical uh, problems like, uh, you know, pre-existing diabetes or <clears throat> hypertension or any such major things. Or during the course of this pregnancy, you've not developed a gestational diabetes or gestational hypertension, or you don't have any clotting uh, or a mm, thromboembolic uh, problems, then you you know more or less you fall into the lower category. Also, if there is no placental insufficiency, you cannot you can wait for a normal pains and normal labor to come. Plus, if your baby is in the right position with heads down, it is not a malpresentation uh, wherein you know it the baby is in a transverse lie or the breech is down, the legs are down. So these are the conditions where. We generally discourage a normal delivery. Also, a too big a baby, wherein there is cephalopelvic disproportion. That means the baby is too big, uh, is another thing where uh, a normal delivery cannot happen. Also, if there has been previous surgeries on the uterus, previous cesarean, or uh, say a fibroid removal, or such uh, major operations, again, your uh, scar is weak and your uterus is not strong enough to make those. Uh, major labor contractions. So these are roughly the conditions where it, uh, you know, we, we ask you to not look at a normal delivery. Also, if you have a very short stature, generally the, you know, there is a contracted pelvis that happens. If your gynecologist tells you that uh, there is a, you know, chance wherein uh, there may not be enough place for the head to descend down, then also we put you to a caesarean delivery and not a normal delivery.